Shabbat Shalom, everybody, my Hebrews and my Shalomi homies. If you are new here, yes, those are words. And if you're new here and you're like, wait a minute, I thought this guy was the crazy prepper guy with the sheep and the goats and the chainsaws and stuff. You've stumbled upon my dastardly underhanded plan to use preparedness to make you read your Bible. <laughs> Evil laugh. No, what you've stumbled upon is the core reason this channel exists. And that is so that we can encourage and educate and edify one another and walk a little bit closer to the Father every day. So thank you for being here. At this time, I'd like to ask the worship band to take it down just a little bit. Um, just a little bit of bass right here. Gentle, gentle. We'll count, let's count quarters on the rides, but gentle, maybe a little double tap. Okay, that's good. Gentle cymbal swells. No vocals, no guitar. Simmer down. Maybe some acoustic. The coffee and the donuts are in the back. Uh, please fill out the little form and put it in the plate when it comes around so we'll know how to pray for you. And uh, flip open your Bibles to Numbers 32, which is after Numbers 31, but before Numbers 33, because that's how numbers work. And uh, we're going to read Numbers 32 and quite possibly Numbers 33 as well today. Now, contextually, because I'm, context is my number two character trait. Uh, yeah, my number one is I'm an achiever, which is 100% predicated on action. So if I know what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, short of uh, making all the go juice leak out of my veins, you're not stopping me. So context. Chapter 31 of Numbers, we see here that the Israelites go into Midian and utterly destroy the Midianites. And uh, there's a lot of reason for that. Part of that is because of the underhanded asymmetric warfare from Balaam and Balak, the king of Midian, the Midianite king, right? Midian? Yeah, Midian. Anyway, Balaam and Balak. They could not defeat Israel head to head on the battlefield so they decided we'll pollute their bloodlines and we will distract them with our pagan women very much so reminiscent of proverbs in fact you know because we can let's go to proverbs real quick all the time here in proverbs i mean um let's see Proverbs 6, uh, we'll go to 623. For the command is a lamp, and the Torah a light, and reproofs of discipline a way of life, to guard you against an evil woman from the flattering tongue of a strange woman. Do not desire her prettiness in your heart, neither let her captivate you with her eyelids. For because of a whore, one is brought to a crust of bread, and an adulteress hunts a precious life. Would a man take fire to his bosom and his garments not be burned? Would a man walk on hot coals and his feet not be scorched? So is he who goes in to his neighbor's wife. None who touches her goes unpunished. They do not despise a thief. They meaning the Midianites, for example, here. Uh, he who commits adultery with a woman lacks heart. He who destroys it, he who does it destroys his own life. He finds smiting and shame and reproach is not wiped away. For jealousy enrages a man and he does not spare in the day of vengeance. He does not regard any ransom nor accept your bribe, however great. Meaning there's no coming back from it. But this concept of whoring, we see this idea of whoring repeatedly over and over again in Proverbs and with this evil woman and literally here in Numbers, Numbers 31, the Midianites 
were destroyed, um, in, up to and including everybody but their female children were destroyed because they were um, pagan heathens, and Yahweh said, destroy them. Now, that in of itself seems very um, ungodlike if all you've ever read is the New Testament and if all you've ever been told is God is love, and he is, absolutely, and he's protection and provision and blessing for his people, for his people. In fact, before we read 32, just contextually in 31, we're going to go one more place, and then we're going to start 32. Go to Matthew 7, 21. And I go to this verse often, but it's worth going there often. This is page 926 in the scriptures. Um, if you're new here and you don't know what Bible I'm using, it's literally called the scriptures. It looks like this. It has, um, I have an entire video on what it is and why I use it. So you can go to the YouTube search bar, just put in Bear Independent Bible, and you'll see there's a video called What Bible Does Bear Use? That's the one. And that explains why I use this Bible. So Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone who says to me, Master, Master, shall enter into the reign of the heavens. This is Yeshua speaking. This is Jesus, Messiah speaking. Not everyone who says to me, Master, Master, shall enter into the reign of heavens. Not everybody who claims me as Messiah is getting into heaven. Holy stuff. Wow. Not what I was taught, but this is what Messiah says. But he who is doing the desire of my Father in the heavens. He who is doing. Doing implies action, huh? So it's not just simply by belief. By grace through faith we are saved, right? But James, Jacob, who was Yeshua's brother, literal, is famous for saying, faith without works is dead. Yeah, that's right. You got to do the things. And here's my point here. Many shall say to me in that day, Master, Master, have we not prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and done many mighty works in your name? And then I shall declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who work lawlessness. Get away from me, you people who are not doing Torah. Therefore, everyone who, bear, who hears these words of mine and does them, and does them, shall be like a wise man who built his house on a rock. And then he goes into that parable right there. Because it's pretty much 99.99% confirmed in my mind and my research now that Yeshua wasn't a carpenter. He was a stonemason. Uh, which is why so many of his parables revolve around rocks and stones. Very rarely does he go, you see this board? See, it's like this board. The kingdom of heaven is like this board. And Yah is this hand plane and you see that it, no he doesn't say that he's constantly talking about rocks so anyway you got to do the things the father tells you to do and not like just when they sound easy or comfortable or um, it fits in with your timeline or your strategic goals <clears throat> If it's more about you than it is about Yahweh, you're going to be one of those people that's saying, Master, Master, and Yeshua's going, get the hell away from, who are you? You don't know me, I'm Bob, I cast out demons in your name. He's like, that's cool, did you do my things? Because when you cast out demons in his name, it's with the authority of Yeshua and the power of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, that you are doing those things. It's not you that has that power and authority. You are simply a vessel. This canteen does not save lives. The water inside of it is what sustains and saves your life. You're the vessel. The water is what's special. It's Yeshua's authority and the power of the Holy Spirit that allows you to do those things in his name. But you ain't special. I'm not special either. So just because 
you were a vessel that held the living water for a short period of time doesn't mean if you don't do the things that we've been told to do, commanded to do, do this forever, does not mean that you're just going to waltz into heaven amongst the saints. That's straight out of the mouth of Yeshua, and that's pretty much the scariest verse in the Bible. I've heard it said that, that, and I would agree. So all of that 10 plus minutes of Jabber John, not reading a word of 32 yet, so let's get started. I really would encourage you to get your Bibles out and read along. 32. And the children of Reuben and the children of Gad had much livestock, a large number. And they saw the land of Yazer, of Jazer, and the land of Gilead, and saw that the place was a place for livestock. So the children of Gad and the children of Reuben came and spoke to Moshe and to Eliezer the priest and to the leaders of the congregation, saying, All right, so <clears throat> the tribes of Gad and Reuben, they had a lot of animals. River crossing with a lot of animals is hard work. And uh, they're looking at this area on the east side of the Jordan River, going, I know that the promised land is over there on the west side, but uh, yo, Moshe, can we talk? So that's what's going on here. And Adaroth and Dibon and Yazer and Nimrah and Heshan and Elale, El Ale, El Ale, I don't know, ain't hashtag not Hebrew. Um, Sebam and Nebo and Beon, the land which Yahweh had stricken before the congregation of Israel is a land for livestock and your servants have livestock. So they, these guys get together with Moses, Moshe, and they're like, look, this land before us right here, where Yah cleared all these people out of the way, this is great land for animals. We got animals. And they said, if we have found favor in your eyes, let this land be given to your servants as a possession, and do not let us pass over the Jordan. Hey, man, if we're cool, can we just stay here? And Moshe said to the children of Gad and the children of Reuben, Are your brothers to go into battle while you yourselves sit here? It's like, oh, you want to hang out here while everybody else goes across the river and swings their axes? Now, why do you discourage the heart of the children of Israel from passing over into the land which Yahweh has given them? Thus your fathers did when I sent them away from Kadesh Barnea to see the land. He's like, look, we've had this issue before. Forty years ago, y'all people wouldn't go across the river. We wandered around in the wilderness for 40 years, so those of you who wouldn't cross the river would die off so that we could come back here and go back across the river. And now you're like, nah, I don't want to go. Why are you discouraging the people of Israel? Thus your fathers did when I sent them away from Kadesh Barnea to see the land. For when they went up to the Wadi Eshkol, so a Wadi is a dry riverbed, um, or a riverbed that has this much water in it, and then it rains and it, you know, fills up and floods out from there. So a dry, dryish riverbed area. Come on, brain, find the words back in the book. For, verse 9, for when they went up to the Wadi Eshkal and saw the land, they discouraged the heart of the children of Israel so that they did not go into the land which Yahweh had given them. Then the displeasure of Yahweh burned on that day, and he swore an oath, saying, Not one of the men who came up from Mitzrayim, from Egypt, from twenty years old and above, is to see the land of which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because they did not follow me completely." except Caleb, son of Yephunneh, and the, the Kezanite, and Yehoshua, son of Nun, for they have followed Yahweh completely. So Moshe's like, look, here's the deal, Reuben and Gad. The last time we were here and didn't go across the river, Yah, the father of God, lost his stuff and made us wander in the wilderness for 40 years to die off because we rejected his promised land. Are you sure you don't want to go back across the river? 
So the displeasure, verse 13, so the displeasure of Yahweh burned against Israel and he made them wander in the wilderness for 40 years until all the generation that had done evil in the eyes of Yahweh was destroyed. And see, you have risen in your father's place an increase of men, sinners, to add still more the burning displeasure of Yahweh against Israel. <laughs> He's like, so Moses just kind of sent them a zinger there. He said, look, they died off. And then you rise in their place, zingers, uh, sinners, to add even more to the displeasure of the Most High God. What is wrong with you? Moses is not pulling his punches here. He's making sure that they are of the right mind frame. And see, you have risen in your father's place an increase of men, sinners, to add still more the burning displeasure of Yahweh against Israel. For And Israel is the father's people. It is not a nation state on a map. For if you turn away, and just nation briefly, nation does not mean borders on a map. Nation, that word is ethnos. It's people groups. So the nation of Israel is 12 different tribes, people groups, 10 of which have been scattered to the winds. Why? Because we can read in this book to be the esteem of the Gentiles, to bring the Gentiles back to Yah. How cool is that? But it's groups of people, not... So the nation of Israel is groups of people across the world who serve the kingdom, who serve the kingdom's creator, who are indwelt with the Holy Spirit, who are saved by Yeshua Messiah. That's Israel, not, you know, this little strip of land in the Middle East that the United Nations decided should be given to a group of people in 1948. Um, and that we can, we can get deeper on that at some point, and perhaps we should, because Part of Israel is in Israel, but Israel is not Israel. Know what I mean? Got it. That's not confusing at all. Verse 15, for if you turn away from following him, from following Yah, he shall once again leave them in the wilderness and you shall destroy all these people. Then they came near to him and said, Let us build sheep enclosures here for our livestock and cities for our little ones. <clears throat> but let us be armed, hastening before the children of Israel, until we have brought them to their place. And our little ones shall dwell in the walled cities because of the inhabitants of the land. So check this out. They're like, all right. Picking up what you're laying down here, Moshe. We got a plan. We're going to build some sheep pens here. And remember, they had what did they just came back with 675,000 sheep from destroying the Midianites? That's a lot of sheep. I've got like a tenth of one tenth of one percent of that out here. And I'm like, ugh, time to feed the sheep again, you know. So they got a lot of sheep. So, like, here's the deal, Mosh. We're going to build sheep enclosures here for livestock. And uh, we're going to build some cities for our families, our little ones. But we ourselves, we will be armed. We'll have our swords, we'll have our axes, we'll have our M240 Bravos. They didn't have Bravo, but whatever. They could have. Time traveling Jesus. Sorry, brain fart. Um, they should have had Bravos, but we'll stay here or our animals and our little ones will stay here. We will arm ourselves hastening before the children of Israel. We, not only will we go, we will go out in front of the rest of y'all until we have brought them, the rest of these tribes, to their place. And our little ones shall dwell in the walled cities because of the inhabitants of the land. That way, we won't have to bring our kids into the war zone our kids can stay back here. Our livestock can stay back here. We'll use this as a staging position. Then we will arm ourselves, go in, because our kids and our livestock are back here. We will go into the land before the children of Israel hack a path in there. And so when the other 10 tribes come in, 
they're not subjected. Think about this. Militarily, this is brilliant. So that they're not subjecting their family and their livestock to the inhabitants of the land. Pretty damn cool, huh? We shall not return to our homes until every one of the children of Israel has received his inheritance, meaning they will go throughout the promised land and just wage war until every one of the children of Israel has received his inheritance. That's pretty, like, Reuben and Gad was like, not only are we not P-words, we're not just going to stay on this side of the river, we will go in and be the very tip of the spear. Pretty cool. For we shall not inherit with them on the other side of the Jordan and beyond because our inheritance has fallen to us on the eastern side of the Jordan. We're going to stop at verse 20 for a minute. If you have the scriptures, go all the way to the last map in the back, titled Tribal Allotments, page 1250. If you don't have the scriptures... Um, Stand by because I'm about to hold it up to the screen. And if there is somebody out there that doesn't have the scriptures, this book, but needs one, please email me. NTXMag. November Tango X-Ray. Mike Alpha Gulf at Gmail. If there's somebody who needs a copy of this book... Email me. We'll get you one. And if there's somebody out there who would like to sponsor a copy of this book to one of your brothers or sisters, email me. We will let you know where to get one. And uh, let's literally spread this word. And I got a copy of the scriptures in the mail from somebody recently. I don't know if you want to be shouted or not, shouted out or not, but thank you, brother. And. Uh, he said, hey, if you need this, take it. If you don't, give it to somebody who does. And that kind of sparked this idea. So if you need a copy of the scriptures, let me know. We'll get you one. If you'd like to donate a copy of the scriptures to one of your brothers or sisters, let me know. And we will tell you how to get one to somebody who needs it. <clears throat> now, the last page is this map. See this map? So... This side of the Jordan, the east side of the Jordan, we've got Reuben down at the bottom, then Gad in the middle. So we got Reuben, Gad, and then this is East uh, Manasseh or Manasseh. All right. But these guys are over here going, hey man, let's leave our sheep here. Then we'll go across the Jordan River, and then we'll go in and clear out this entire area. So they're using this area as a staging area. They said, look, we just wiped this area out. Let's leave our livestock here, build our cities here for our little ones, our families. Then we will go clean all this out first. And we won't return home until the entirety of the tribes of Israel have received their inheritance. And then we will return to our staging area here. <clears throat> And everybody will be good to go. <clears throat> so, that is what they're talking about. And I just wanted to give you that visual so that hopefully it would help. All right. I already feel good about this Bible sponsorship thing. I like that a lot. And in fact, uh, John R., who is a producer of a show that I was recently a guest on, kind of stoked that fire in a very uh, good conversation. We talked for a long time. Good. It was very good. Just I didn't expect we would talk for as long as we did, but it was excellent. Um, as far as the whole donating Bibles thing. So, awesome. Let's do it. I got the first one. I'll get it moving. The first one's on me. Let's keep it rolling from there. And actually, the first one already wasn't on me. That was one of y'all, and you're awesome. So I'll get the next one, and then uh, we'll take it from there. So let's pick back up verse 20. And Moshe said to them, If you make this promise, if you, if you arm yourselves before Yahweh for battle, 
and all your armed ones pass over the Jordan before Yahweh until he has driven out his enemies from before him and the land has been subdued before Yahweh. Then afterward you shall return and be guiltless before Yahweh and before Israel, and this land shall be your possession before Yahweh. So if you arm yourselves and go in and clear the land, as you've just said, all is well. Then this land that you want shall be your possession before Yahweh. But if you do not do so, then see, you shall sin against Yahweh, and know your sin is going to find you out. Build cities for your little ones and enclosures for your sheep, and do what you have promised. Yep, and do what you have promised. Didn't we just see uh, recently, right here in Numbers 30, um, and Moshe spoke to the heads of the tribes concerning the children of Israel, saying, This is the word which Yahweh commanded. When a man vows a vow to Yahweh or swears an oath to bind himself by some agreement, he does not break his word. He does according to all that comes out of his mouth. Right? So this should be fresh in their mind. So... Chapter 32, verse 24, again, build cities for your little ones and enclosures for your sheep and do what you have promised. And the children of Gad and the children of Reuben spoke to Moshe, saying, your servants are going to do as my master commands. Our little ones, our wives, our flocks, and all our livestock are going to be there in the cities of Gilead. But your servants are passing over every armed one of the army passing over, going across the river, all of us who are armed in the army before Yahweh to battle as my master says. And Moshe gave command concerning them to Eliezer the priest, to Yehoshua the son of Nun, and to the heads of the fathers of the tribes of the children of Israel. So Moses passed the word out. Who did he pass it to? Eliezer the priest, to Joshua, Yehoshua, uh, and to the heads of the fathers of the tribes of the children of Israel, so that, you know, game of telephone. Think of like a, um, a an emergency contact tree, where there's one person at the top, and they call three people, and each of those three people call three people, and each of those three people call three people, and so by, the, you know, the fourth iteration, we got, you know, 60-some people by the... I'm guessing here, by the 10th iteration, we've got thousands of people, right? And so that's what they're doing. He's going to the heads, the top, and then disseminating that information downward. <clears throat> and Moshe said to them, if the children of Gad and the children of Reuben pass over the Jordan with you, every man armed for battle before Yahweh, and the land has been subdued before you, then you shall give them the land of Gilead as a possession. But if they do not pass over armed with you, they shall have possession among you in the land of Canaan. So if they don't go, they are going to end up in the land of Canaan on the other side of the Jordan among these other ten tribes. That's interesting because now there's a bit of peer pressure and motivation for the other ten tribes to go, grab your sword, Chaim, it's time to go to battle. Your land is over there on that side, Gilead, on the east side of the Jordan. Mine's over here in Canaan. I don't want you living with me. So grab your rucksack, grab your rifle. It's time to roll. Hmm, there's a lot of wisdom in this book, if you can see it, if you just read it. I mean, how many times must I beg people to just, just read your Bible? All you gotta do is just read it and it's there. And I pray over mine every time I open it. And I say, Father, just show me what you need me to see. And I'm never disappointed. <laughs> then the children of Gad and the children of Reuben answered, saying, As Yahweh has said to your servants, we do so. We ourselves are passing over armed before Yahweh into the land of Canaan, but the possession of our inheritance remains with us beyond the Jordan. So everybody is on the same page here. Everybody is on the same page. So interestingly enough, in Hebrew, 
Reuben means he has looked upon my affliction, and Gad means good fortune. So if you think about those who are leading the charge, it's those whom Yahweh has seen their affliction and is giving them good fortune as they go into the land. How cool is that? So Moshe gave to the children of Gad and to the children of Reuben and to half the tribe of Manasseh, son of Joseph, the reign of Sihon, king of the Amorites, and the reign of Og, king of Bashan. Og was a giant. He was Nephilim. And he got smited hardcore by the Israelites. His, uh, what was his bed was, what, four and a half foot wide, three cubits wide by 13 something feet long. Yeah. Yeah. Just a little guy. That's where you bring that 240 Bravo into play. They're like, yeah, we got a giant up here. Can you move the Bravo up? Yeah, copy that. All right. Everybody keep the giant pinned down. We got a Bravo gunner coming. Okay. So Moshe gave to the children of Gad, to the children of Reuben, and to half the tribe of Manasseh, son of Joseph, the reign of Sihon, the king of the Amorites, and the reign of Og, the king of Bashan, and the land with its cities within its borders, and the cities of the land round about. And the children of Gad built Devon, and Adaroth, and Aroer, and Atroth, and Shophan, and Jazer, and Jagbacha, and Beth Nimra, and Beth Haran, walled cities and enclosures for sheep. And the children of Reuben built Heshbon and El Elah and Kiryatsaim. Uh, that's a word. Nebo and Baal Maon, the names being changed, and Shivma, and they gave other names to the cities which they built. And the sons of Machir, son of Manasseh, went to Gilead and took it and dispossessed the Amorites who were in it. So Moshe gave Gilead to Machir, son of Manasseh, and he dwelt in it. And Yair, son of Manasseh, went and took its small towns and called them Haoth, Havoth, Yair. And Nova went and took Kenath and its villages, and he called it Nova after his own name. Now, that is 32. So that's the beginning of the division of the land. Um, we're going to plow 33. There's a lot of names in here. So if you're one of those people that gets upset when T reads Hebrew poorly, you might want to skip this next part. But there's, a, I think, a pretty good takeaway here at the end of 33. <clears throat> As always, after we've accomplished a chapter, we hydrate. By the way, if you were here for Sukkot and this cup looks familiar, it's probably yours because I did not have this cup before Sukkot and now miraculously I have it. So if you'd like this cup back, text me. <laughs> but it's working great. I appreciate you deeply. Thank you. Also, one of y'all left a bar of soap and uh, a soap holder case thing in one of my showers. So I've been rubbing that on my butt. If you want it back, you can have it. Am I kidding? You'll never know. These are the departures of the children of Israel who went out into the land of Mitzrayim by their divisions under the hand of Moshe and Aaron. And Aaron. So this is back in the day. Back in the day. And Moshe wrote down the starting points of their departures at the mouth of Yahweh, and these are their departures according to their starting points. So they departed from Ramses in the first new moon on the 15th day of the new moon, <laughs> Pesach, Passover. On the morrow of the Pesach, the children of Israel went out with boldness before the eyes of all the Mitzrites. They're like, we're out. Y'all have a good one. Enjoy that death of a firstborn plague. Have a nice life. See you later, Ramses. 
And the Mitzrites were bury, burying all their firstborn, when, whom Yahweh had stricken among them. Also, on their mighty ones, Yahweh had executed judgments. Then the children of Israel departed from Ramses and camped at Sukkot. And they departed from Sukkot and camped at Etham, which is on the edge of the wilderness. And they departed from Etham and turned back to Pi Chariath, which is east of Baal Saphon. And they camped near Migdal. And they departed from before Hahiroth and passed through the midst of the sea into the wilderness, went three days' journey in the wilderness of Etham and camped at Marah. And they departed from Marah and came to Elim. And at Elim, or Elim, were twelve springs of water and seventy palm trees. So they camped there. And they departed from Elim and camped by the Sea of Reeds. They departed from the Sea of Reeds and camped in the wilderness of Sin. And they departed from the wilderness of Sin and camped at Dovka. And they departed from Dovka and camped at Alush. And they departed from Alush and they camped at Rephidim. And there was no water for the people to drink. You may remember that story. And they departed from Rephidim and camped in the wilderness of Sinai. And they departed from the wilderness of Sinai and camped at Kibroth Hatava. And they departed from Kibroth Hatava and camped at Hatzeroth. I like Hatzeroth. Hatzeroth sounds like it'd be a really good black metal name. Hatzeroth. But also like... If you had a hat and then you took it off, you'd be like, who's that guy? You'd just be like, Hatzeroth. Oh, I got it now. All right. And they departed from Hatzeroth and camped at Rithma. And they departed from Rithma and camped at Ramon Peretz. And they departed from Ramon Peretz and camped at Libna. And they departed from Libna and camped at Riza not from the Wu-Tang Clan, and they departed from Riza and camped at Kehalata, and they departed from Kehalata and camped at Mount, Mount Shafer, and they departed from Mount Shafer and camped at Harada, and they departed from Harada and camped at Machaloth, and they departed from Machaloth and camped at Tahath, and they departed from Tahath, I know, hang with me, and they departed from Tahath and camped at Terah. And they departed from Terah and camped at Mithka. And they departed from Mithka and camped at Hashmona. And they departed from Hashmona and camped at Mozaroth. And they departed from Mozaroth and camped at Bene Yakan. And they departed from Bene Yakan and camped at Hor Chagidad. That's a cool one, Chagidad. And they departed from Hor Chagidad and camped at Yochbatath. And they departed from Yothbatath and camped at Avrona. And they departed from Avrona. And they camped by Etzion Geber. And they departed from Etzion Geber. And they camped in the wilderness of Sin, which is Kadesh. And they departed from Kadesh and camped at Mount Hor. And on the boundary of the land of Edom, the Edomites. Then Aaron the priest went up to Mount Hor at the mouth of Yahweh and died there in the fortieth year after the children of Israel had come out of the land of Mitzrayim on the first day of the fifth new moon. Now Aaron was 123 years old when he died on Mount Hor. And the sovereign of Arad, the Canaanite, the king of Arad, the Canaanite, who dwelt in the south of the land of Canaan, heard of the coming of the children of Israel. So they departed from Mount Hor and camped at Salmona. So the king in that region heard that Israel was coming. And so they were like, we don't want no trouble. So they just moseyed. They moseyed on to Salmona. And they departed from Salmona and camped at Punan. And they departed from Punan and camped at Obath. And they departed from Obath and camped at Ehi Abarim, the border of Moab, where the jeeps come from. And they departed from Aim and camped at Dibon Gad. And they departed from Dibon Gad and camped at Almon Diblafaema. And they departed from Almon Diblafaema. And they camped in the mountains of Abarim before Nebo. And they departed from the mountains of Abarim and camped in the desert plains of Moab by the Jordan of Jericho. <clears throat> or, or the Jardin of Jericho. Or the Jardin of Jericho. Depending on what you're reading. <clears throat> and 
and they camped by the Jordan from Beth Yeshimoth as far as Abel Shatim in the desert plains of Moab where the Jeeps come from. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe in the desert plain of Moab by the Jordan of Jericho saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When you have passed over the Jordan into the land of Canaan, then you shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land before you and shall destroy all their engraved stones and shall destroy all their molded images and lay waste to their high places. Um, for me here, the takeaway is these people went everywhere. They went where the father led them. And yes, there was grumbling. And I'll tell you what, when there was grumbling, guess what? The father smited them. He uh, destroyed them from amongst their people. And uh, I just find it terribly interesting that so many people nowadays that I talk to who are like, um, I just don't, I just don't know what to do, brother. I just, I'm feeling led, but I just don't know if I can take the leap, if I can make the jump from where, and listen, I've been there. I've done it like several times. I've this, they departed from this place and then went to that place, is very reminiscent of my life, actually. I spent 12 years living out of a duffel bag. Everything I owned fit in a giant army green duffel bag. That's it. By sea or by air or by land, me and El Duffel Bago, we went and did the things. And I get it. Depart from this place, go to that place, set up camp, do the things next. <clears throat> so... But the point is, remember, Yahweh's literally indwelt with them at the tabernacle. And when the cloud would move from above the tabernacle, the tent of appointment, they would move and follow it. They were literally being led by Yah throughout this 40 years of trial and tribulation in the wilderness. We got to remember that. We are literally being led by the hand of our creator. And so the next time it seems, <sighs> I just don't want to move one more time. I don't want to go. Tough cookies, buttercup. We're going. This walk is not always easy but it is always good. We say we desire to walk with the Father daily. If you walk with the Father daily, you're gonna leave one place and end up at another repeatedly. So saith me, so saith Numbers chapter 33. So, when you feel that tug on your heart, it's time to go. It's time to go. Strap on your sandals, wipe the dust from your feet, and move out. Israel did it repeatedly for 40 years, so. Habakkuk 2, 18, page 628. Stick a finger there. Because here in Numbers uh, 33, 53, I'm sorry, 52. Then you shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you and shall destroy all their engraved stones and shall destroy all their molded images and lay waste to the, all their high places. Habakkuk. 
628. Habakkuk 2, verse 18. Of what use shall a carved image be? For its maker has carved it, a molded image and a teacher of falsehood. For the maker trusts what he has made to make dumb idols. Woe to him who says to wood, Awake, and to silent stone, Arise. Is it a teacher? See, it is overlaid with gold and silver, and there is no spirit at all inside it. But Yahweh in his set-apart hakal, let all the earth be silent before him. I've seen in other translations that phrase right there it says woe to him who breathes life into wood and stone remember that the next time you see a carved image hanging on the wall of a church I'm telling you the most dangerous but productive thing you can do for your walk with your creator through the wilderness of sin is to read your own damn Bible for yourself. You're gonna come away with so many takeaways in here that are so against everything that you've been taught your entire life, simply because what you've been taught your entire life has an agenda and it's not the perfect truth of Yahweh. <coughs> Page 181, Numbers 33. Verse 53, and you shall possess the land and dwell in it, for I have given you the land to possess. There is good stuff on the other side of this walk and this tribulation with the Father. And you shall divide the land by lot as an inheritance among your clans. To the larger you give a larger inheritance, and to the smaller you give a smaller inheritance. Whatever the lot falls to anyone, that is his. You inherit according to the tribes of your fathers. You get what you get. Be thankful for it. The need is met with the appropriate allotment of blessing to the larger, the larger, to the smaller, the smaller. And if you do not drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you, if you do not utterly clear out all of this disgusting bullshizer in front of you, all of this pagan idolatry, demon worship, strangulation, fornication, blood drinking, abomination, if you don't get rid of that from your life, then it shall be that those whom you let remain shall be pricks in your eyes and thorns in your side, and they shall trouble you in the land where you are to dwell and it shall be that I do to you as I thought to do to them I will give you the judgment that they deserve if you do not get these people out of your promised land and we see repeatedly that's the end of 33 but we see repeatedly the sanctification process this being set apart unto Yahweh people fall by the wayside People fall by the wayside. And it's not just your drug addict buddies or your, you know, your friends from the metal scene that all are Satan worshipers and idiots or atheists or whatever. It's not just that that are the thorns in your side and the pricks in your eyes. It's Matthew 7, 21. Those who work lawlessness. Not everybody who says to me, Master, Master, shall enter into the reign of the heavens. Not everybody. Look, all but two of the original Israelites didn't make it into the promised land. The way is straight. The gate is narrow. If you do not drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you, then it shall be that those whom you let remain shall be pricks in your eyes and thorns in your side, and they shall trouble you in the land where you dwell. And it shall be that I do to you all that I thought to do to them. There's one last thing that comes to mind. It's back in Proverbs. Let's go to Proverbs. Proverbs 6. 
12. A man of Belial, a wicked man, walks with a perverse mouth, winks with his eyes, shuffles his feet, points with his fingers. Perverseness is in his heart, plotting evil at all times. He sends out strife. Therefore, his calamity comes suddenly. Instantly, he is broken, and there is no healing. These six matters Yahweh hates. And seven are an abomination to him. These are the seven. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands shedding innocent blood. A heart devising wicked schemes, feet quick to run to evil, a false witness breathing out lies, and one who causes strife among brothers. One who causes strife among brothers. That one sticks out to me. Remember that. My son, watch over your father's command and do not forsake the Torah of your mother. Bind them on your heart always. Tie them around your neck when you are walking about. It leads you when you lie down. It guards you and when you have and when you have woken up, it talks to you, for the command is a lamp, and the Torah is a light, and reproofs of discipline, a way of life, to guard you against an evil woman from the flattering tongue of a strange woman, as we saw earlier. But that one who causes strife among brothers... <coughs> I do not mean to cause strife among anybody... But uh, the best that I can do is read this word for myself every day. And I'm about five out of seven, six out of seven weekly, truth be told. Um, haven't had a perfect week in weeks, so there's an immediate goal. We're going to have a perfect week. Um, I can read this word for myself and then I can read it with you all each week. It is not my intention to cause strife among brothers. It's only my intention to show you what the Father has allowed me to see. Not everybody will enter into the promised land, including those who think they're going. I don't want that to be you. I don't want it to be me either. And so all I can do is my best to walk daily with the Father. And if he says, yo, I know you camped at Hashmona, but I need you to go to Moseroth, copy that, pack it up, we're rolling. Because there is an inheritance on the other side of that. And if we do the things, we get to claim that inheritance. But in the claiming of that inheritance, it's on us to drive out the inhabitants of the land. Otherwise, there'll be a prick in our eyes and a thorn in our side. And the judgment that they deserve, we will get for simply tolerating them. Think about that. That's not my words. It's the words of Yah. Yahweh spoke to Moshe in the desert plains of Moab by the Jordan of Jericho, saying, Speak to the children of Israel. And it shall be that I do to you as I thought to do to them copy that that's the end of numbers 33 and I don't know where my bookmark went so improvise adapt and overcome can't use that that's my page holder in revelation we'll use this what is this <laughs> that's another another video for another time <clears throat> but a uh, discourse on the uh, biblical expectations of Gentiles to keep <laughs> Levitical law. <gasps> yeah, whole another video for another time. Shalom and blessings, y'all. I hope that this was uh, edifying for y'all. I really do. It's the it's what keeps me coming back to YouTube each week. So thank you for the opportunity to read the word with you. Shalom.